Hey guys, so now we have our store. So we want to finally persist something to our database and actually see React, Redux, and Spring Boot working together for the first time. And I know for, for a lot of you, this is the first time, this is the first time actually uh, calling an API from a JavaScript application. So this is exciting. I, I remember when I, first time I did it, I was excited. So. <laughs> Again, if it's the first time you're doing this, I'm, I'm I'm glad to be your instructor because this this is always always a lot of fun to see things work that way. Anyway, um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to create an action. With this action is basically how we're going to manage two things: how the API calls to our Spring Boot backend, which we created a few videos ago, and then what actions it we are going to dispatch to our state what is that we're going to dispatch to our state all right right now we're all set to to dispatch errors to load our errors uh object in the state if there are any now what would be the use case if we transmit this blank then we're going to have an error here from the server saying the project test summary should be filled out i don't even remember what we put there but we'll see it in a, in a few minutes or probably in the next lecture probably yeah Sorry for being redundant there. Anyway, um, so we're gonna go. To, we're gonna close out of this because it's all set up. We don't need to do nothing here anymore. And we're gonna come here to the actions folder, and we're gonna create a new file. This new file is gonna be called. Uh, how do I want to call this? Let me think for a second. Um, yeah, project task actions. Project task actions. Yes, perfect. First thing we want to do here is import Axios. Axios is, and we brought this in in that little lecture where we uh, actually installed all of our dependencies. And this is basically a library that we're going to use to uh, manage our API calls. All right. So um, the first action is going to be obviously to add a project task. And right now we're just going to happy path this this thing. Okay. So we're going to do export const add project task all right now this is going to take two parameters it's going to take the project task that we're going to create and then it's going to take history now history is one of those props that i showed you react router dom passes onto a component every time a component is rendered so basically what's going to happen here and i just want to make that pit stop here is that just a second is that whenever we create here whenever we click on here create project task and it loads this component we're probably gonna have to fix that don't worry we'll take care of that one when we load that component react router DOM will pass these three parameters every time without us doing anything I'm sorry, these are uh, props. My apologies, I said parameter, I'm, I meant props. It will pass these props. One of these props is history, right? And history gives us a method called push. And this basically allows us to redirect. We're gonna use this for redirecting, okay? So basically what we're gonna do with this prop is that when we pass it on to, from the component, we pass it on to the action, then what we're gonna do is redirect to the project board when everything goes, if everything goes well, well, we'll obviously after we try to post to the back end. All right, so this is what this history here means. And again, uh, React Router DOM, every time anything is rendered through a route from React Router DOM, these props get passed on to, and they, they are available for you. So you can use push to just uh, redirect to a different route. Again, it'll make more sense when we actually do it. So here we're gonna say, we're gonna start using uh, thunk because we're gonna actually return a dispatch action, okay? That's why you see that basically we're saying return, we're gonna return a dispatch action here. And we're gonna say await axios.post and then here we're gonna obviously post to our 
back in. Now, if you remember from Postman, when we were doing our back end, and let me just get back to that one real quick. Here, if you guys remember, we say API slash board, and then that's when we pass the project task object. So basically, this is exactly the same URL or endpoint that we're going to be hitting. So we're going to say here, localhost, API board, and then we're going to pass it the project task, which is obviously the object that we're trying to pass. So basically, what we're doing here is literally what we, are, what we did here manually, but just obviously this time around is coming from the form, and then Axios literally is going to just translate this into a JSON object that just goes back to our uh, Spring Boot application, right? And then if everything goes well, then what we want to do is history, which I already showed you, history.push. And then we want to say, just take me back to the project board because I want to see my newly created project task, right? Great. So now that this is in place, we can close out of this for now because this should work. And then we want to go back to our add project task. All right. Now, before we do anything else, I think I'm going to ask you to please go to your IDE and open your uh, Spring Boot server, which uh, we created a few lessons ago. We haven't done much with it lately, uh, but I'm going to ask you to fire up your server to start it, because I think uh, before the end of this lecture, we're going to be able to save something to our database, all right? And again, right now we're just saving to our database. We're not going to be working on showing or displaying this to the front end yet, right? So just fire up your server so that we can uh, do a few tests here. All right, so now that we're back to the add project task component, which is basically the component that has the controlled form, uh, this is where we're going to obviously uh, trigger that action that we just created, okay? And right now, this is all happy path. This is not handling any, any issues at this very moment. First, we're going to import a few things. We're going to import prop types. We're going to import connect. And again, we'll, we'll talk about this as we start using them. Because I figured that it doesn't matter how much I try to explain this, it's not until we code this these th with these things that you ac you'll actually see what it is that they're for. Then we're gonna also import a new a newly created action. I believe it I believe is yeah, a project task from <clears throat> actions and then obviously project task actions right and then the last thing that we're going to import here is class names and again if you guys have a huge question mark in your faces like why are we importing all this stuff again once we start coding uh with these things i promise i promise it'll make more sense all right Okay, so now that we have all the, these imports here, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom of the file. And this is where we're going to start connecting this to our store. So first I'm going to wrap this in parentheses, and then I'm going to use connect. Now this connect is what we imported here from Redux, React Redux. And what this connect does in layman's terms is that it's going to allow us to connect our component to the store okay basically it's going to allow us to connect to this right it's going to basically allow us to to connect to the store so that we can actually tap into the state and subs uh, in a way subscribe to all the updates happening in the state. This is why this comes from React Redux, because we need to connect to our store, all right? So here, for now, we're gonna pass this as null, because we're, this, here there's a very important piece of code that we're gonna talk about it, 
that we're going to talk about later on. And I'm going to pass here, obviously, the action, okay? The project, the add project task action that we just created, all right? So we're going to pass this. And by the way, uh, I know that if you have, if you guys, some of you are, have some experience with React, you might have seen different uh, patterns on how to do this. If you guys know a better way, if you guys are more comfortable with a different way, go right ahead, right? Nothing's stopping you. This is just my way, the way I learned it and my way of doing it, all right? So um, then here, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use map state to props. A map state to props takes a parameter, which is the state of the application. All right, and what this does is again, it's a way of as our way of subscribing to the application state. All right, and in this component, very specifically, the main thing that we want to get from the state is the errors in case there's a problem with our API call. And again, once we start working on that, you, you this will make a lot more sense. But for now, I just want to wire up, wire this up so that we are completely connected to our store but once we start handling errors then this will become more apparent the other thing is prop types and i'm going to just uh, take a quick um, a quick stop here because i do want to talk a little bit about prop types so prop types is basically everything if i was to put in simple simple terms not in like textbook super documentation terms just very simple terms in very simple terms, this is basically uh, required, say, uh, things that are required for this component to work properly. And app project task is a, is a function, it's a prop type that is, is a prop type that is a function that is required. Okay, without this function, and actually, which I mistyped, add project task, just like that function that we just imported, which is the action that we just created right here it is required without it this this component doesn't work right I mean if we cannot add to the API I mean if we're gonna call the API to persist then this does, so doesn't work so this needs to be present and also the error subject is a prop type of type object right because it's, a, it's an error object that we get from the server whenever we have a problem it's also required all right so basically here we declare what it is that we need for for this component to work that's again it's not the documentation scientific explanation just you know the simplest explanation i can think of all right so now that we have this in place then uh we all we need to do now is come to our unsub unsubmit function that we created earlier we can actually comment this out and then what we want to do is the following. We want to say this dot props. And this is very important. And I'm, I'm sure that you guys are asking, like, why is that in our props? Well, the main reason why you can actually get this from our props right here is because we are passing that when we are connecting this to the store. All right. And we're also importing it all the way all the way up here right so now we can actually use our function as a prop right now this is a prop because also we are declaring that this function is requ required down here we're also connecting this to the store down here right so we can say this dot props dot add project task which is our function and then we can pass it the new project task which is the object that we're getting from the state and then again this the props the history and this the, the, the props the history I already showed you that we get those props because this was this gets rendered by react router Dom cool so now with this in place we should be at a point where we should be able to persist to our database and this is actually really exciting so I'm just gonna go to my h2 console because I, I don't want you guys thinking that I did this behind the scenes. This is like live coding. And if I run a query on my project tasks task table, I don't have anything. All right. So now if I open, if I go back to this 
and I say and I start typing here first react project task the acceptance criteria to persist a project task object to the DB and why don't we say in progress because it's not done yet <laughs> we, we don't even know if this is gonna work if I click submit nothing happened and let's see has been blocked by course origin okay let's see our server real quick huh actually I wasn't expecting that okay so let me read Okay, so my server is running. Just a moment, you guys. This is basically localhost. Ah, sorry guys, my apologies. Look at this. It's right here. It has to be HTTP slash slash. Okay, my sincere apologies for this. Right, this was a rookie mistake on my part. Right, make sure that this is the the way it is here. HTTP colon slash slash localhost okay and now it should actually work first react project task uh, if this works it should persist to DB and then we're gonna say in progress right now because we're still testing it and if everything works this should this should redirect us to the project board and it redirected us to the project board, which is great. Now remember, we haven't we haven't we haven't yet connected this to um, we we haven't even uh, created the API call so that we can display everything that we have in our in our database. All right, so don't worry. This is just dummy data as of now. So let's go to the real star of this show, which is to run the query and see if everything is on the back end now. And there you go first react project task right so uh, we made our first say we connected our our two applications for the first time and they are working now let's go ahead and take care of this it says project board uh, line 10 let's see project board and we can close out of this In the next lecture we're gonna work on handling the errors all right it says line 10 Oh, there it is. See? It's this right here. Class name. And if I save that, now everything's back to normal. Uh, don't worry, we'll take care of this one here. And it says line 11, uh, href. Don't worry about that for now, guys. It's all good. All right, so we have successfully completed uh, our first API call. In the next lecture, we're going to work on handling errors and actually start connecting our action to our reducers. Thank you very much guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.